talking to people, your heart's going a little fast. And you just don't get that. If you don't, don't get that with these books. It's just very comfortable. Think about it. Um, I like sci-fi movies, but good, good sci-fi stuff. I mean, Star Trek I watched, of course, uh, which was great, and uh, the original Stargate movie I loved with Kurt Russell. Um, but generally, I, I mean, I just find now the sci-fi stuff now they're making is just so bad, I can't watch it. <laughs> I just can't watch it, you know? Um, but if there's, you know, good sci-fi stuff, I mean, sci-fi, I would call Gravity sci-fi. Gravity, I loved it. I thought that was a great movie. Um, and the, that seems to be the trend now again. They're going back into all these space movies. Uh, and I like those. I do like those movies because you can just sit back and relax and not think too much, you know. Um, but I haven't got into any other sci-fi series. You know, I know actors on them. And a friend of mine was on Teen Wolf for 10 episodes, so I kind of watched one or two episodes of that. And then I was like, okay, that's enough. <laughs> I don't watch it. It's a, I'm not the demographic for those shows, you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, good sci-fi stuff, I'll definitely watch, yeah. Yeah. Um, I have to say, with Bow, is, is definitely one of my favourites since the war. I found the most interesting part of his overall art was when he was forced to fight out on Earth, and he essentially became like a, a, a crime lord, and he was pulling yeah. all these <laughs> strings, and I thought he was really in his element, and he, he seemed in some way to actually like that better than being out there in the open, and not having to <laughs> That's it bluntly. Okay. No, I love that. When I actually read those uh, scripts, X Days Machina, great episode. And when I saw I was on Earth, it was phenomenal. And I, actually, the best part for, for me, that whole movie, was just when you, you know, it was very quick, but you saw me come out of the hotel with bodyguards and get into the limo. And that was just like exactly crime lord stuff, you know, uh, mafia kind of stuff. And I kind of had that in my head when I was sitting and I had the pinstripe suits and everything was going on. Um, had that beautiful blonde assistant. Jeez. <laughs> I arrived on set and I was like, hi, she's like, hi, I'm playing so and so. And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> so I was like, they worked, I mean, they cast it just perfectly because it's like, they even knew my taste, you know? <laughs> I was like, all right, they want me to be realistic, let's be realistic. Did you get to wear several road suits? What is that? Did you get to wear several road suits? Several road Oh, you know, I don't know what they were, but the, these, these suits were made for me, tailor-made for me by a, a, a tailor in Montreal. Yeah, it, amazing suits. They just fit me like a glove. They didn't even have to do anything. They just, it was amazing. And I, I actually asked them for those two suits that I wore, and they wouldn't give them to me. Yeah. Joe Malosi is on set for them. I, I don't want the suits. They fit me. He's like, no, I'm taking them. <laughs> like, so... <laughs> Joe Malosi is like that, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, dude, these are tailor-made for me. What are you going to do with them? Anyway, I didn't get the suits. I got the boots from the movie. Yeah. Cool. 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 tell whenever I'm called to speak to younger actors, which happens from time to time as I get older. <laughs> um, I Every tell them, yeah, exactly, everyone's younger. I tell them one of the really good exercises you can do is to find yourself in front of your bathroom mirror and then make the ugliest, stupidest faces you can ever think of. And just look at them, look at them. And feel the muscles in your face. I used to do that for, the, for, um, for my, uh, non-dialogue non appearances, <laughs> of which there were many. And um, I, I find that that can, that can help prepare you just to be expressive. Um, when you have very little to say, you really do want to get the point across as much as possible, and also um, steal as much of the screen time as you possibly can. <laughs> so you, 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 you um, make sure that that thought, as it goes from left to right, across your brain, or right to left, depending on the scene, um, takes, it takes you through a process so that when the camera captures it, 
it's on you for a bit and not just a bit. You know. That's about all I can say. No, I didn't practice. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just smiled a lot, so I think. Yeah. Anyone? Yeah. Uh, I live in the United States. <laughs> that should tell you. Yeah. No, let me tell you, South Africa is a beautiful, beautiful place. Uh, and it's very sad, and I, I was very sad that um, I love the fact that I come from there, and I love the fact that I'm from Africa. And I'm very sad that I don't have a home. I do now. And I've got to tell you, I mean, the first year that I got to the United States, I felt more at home there than I ever did in South Africa, even though I grew up in South Africa. Um, just for the simple fact that it's a, it's, it's a functioning society, you know, uh, it's hard to explain. But South Africa is a beautiful place to visit. Uh, I miss the, the wildlife. I miss going out to game lodges and game drives and seeing all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, if you ever get a chance to visit, it's fantastic. But yeah, I became a citizen in 2005 in the United States and I call that home. I think I'm your classic case of arrested development. I left Jamaica at the age of 17. I did most of my high school in there though, so those were formative years. I feel definitely Jamaican, I probably always will, even though I've lived longer in Canada than I've lived anywhere else. Um, hometown, as a, uh, hometown for me, home is where the heart is, it really is. I, um, I feel at home in many different places. I used to call Vancouver home, I lived there for nearly 20 years, I raised my kids there, most of my career was done there, Stargate was done there. I live now in the east, or east of Canada, Toronto I guess would be the closest city. There is a strong Jamaican presence in Toronto, so partly it feels like home for me. Plus I have um, a, uh, an, alter, an alternate career, you know, you guys know me from science fiction and some of the other shot, shows shot in uh, Vancouver, but I do a lot of community um, type uh, productions as well, like stage plays in the Jamaican community or movies that, that really only Caribbean people will ever see. Um, that feeds my soul. I'm very happy to, to, to have a presence in that world. In fact, I'm one of the elder statesmen in that world because I was the first guy in Canada to speak on TV with an authentic Jamaican accent. Normally, we have North Americans playing Jamaicans, and they go, hey, man, they do this, and it's some kind of sing-songy, bullshit, <laughs> and it ain't like that. It's just English with an accent, right, basically. And um, so hometown, let me just, uh, I was born in Kingston, Jamaica, which is uh, a city like Joburg, or a city like uh, Sydney, or a city like Auckland. Um, but I was raised, just west, 13 miles outside of town in another place called Spanish Town, which was the original capital of Jamaica when the Spaniards had it before the Brits came and took it. Spanish Town right now is a big ghetto war zone, but in my day, it was country. And um, so I had a rural upbringing and I went to school in Kingston, which was urban, so call me schizophrenic. <laughs> <laughs> I could talk about this for hours, but I'll wind up here, unless you need something clarified. some tours uh, organized for us last week. Um, I was here eight years ago and I went out to Wahiki Island and I went again with them on Thursday when we went. Uh, there was, they were on tour buses, they were going to do the, the wine wineries and, and all that kind of stuff, which was pretty cool. I wanted to go out there and hit the ocean and go paddle surf somewhere, so I hired a scooter when we got there at the ferry port and off I went on my own <laughs> and they all got on the buses and I did, I went out to, uh, on a Tangi beach. Uh, there's some guys that rent boards and I found some boards to go out for a while. I just wanted to, to paddle surf a little bit. Even, no waves, of course, but just, it was really nice just to go around the coastline there. Um, and then I met them all at the winery for, for lunch. I was wet, I got caught in a rainstorm, 
on my little scooter. It was great. It was such fun. Photos. I, good photos. Good photos. On yeah, the yeah. It was very funny. And I arrived at the winery with my slops on my head. My head, my feet were still full of sand. It was great. I mean, that's my kind of thing, you know. So I had fun doing that. And, but the winery and all that was beautiful. And then they all went on Friday to Hopperton and I didn't go. Um, yeah. So we, you know, it's a great town. I like it. I kind of like just walk walk the city. David Nichol hired a car for two days and he drove. He did like a thousand kilometers in two days. It's crazy. But that's him. He, he loves to just drive out. He went up to this road to Rue. Yeah, he went up there and yeah. So yeah. No, they've all, yeah. we've all seen it. So. Yeah. It was my second time here. Um, thanks to some of you guys, I've been able to nail it down to 1999 was the last time I was here. So things have really changed since then. Um, I, but we'll, I'll never forget, we met a couple of girls last time who. Um, <laughs> who uh, offered to drive us, myself and one of the voice actors who's here as well, Sean. Um, these two girls decided to uh, drive us somewhere, offered to drive us somewhere, and we said yes. Now we figured either we were gonna, you know, uh, get some special <laughs> New Zealand welcome, <laughs> or they were gonna kill us and bury us on the beach somewhere. <laughs> and, but it turned out there were Christian girls who just wanted the experience. But it was way cool, two really lovely girls, I don't forget their names, Deborah and Lynn Lee. They were great. Anyway, if they're watching, because I know you're filming, if they're watching, thanks again. Um, they took us to Rotorua, and um, I, what struck me at that time was all the little places that you could stop and buy honey. I was a honey collector at the time. I'm still a honey aficionado, but honey has been replaced by maple syrup for me. <laughs> um, and then you rode it to the car. And we rode with two honeys in the car. <laughs> yes, of course. And, uh, but this time we went to Wahiki Island, as, as Stiff said. Um, I, I hate getting alcohol because I always have a carry, a carry on and I can never take bottles or anything home with me. Um, the guys who gave us the vodka, what's the name of it again? Uh, True Rock or something? True Rock vodka. Triple Rock. Triple Rock. They gave us little packs of the but mini bottles, which is brilliant, because then I can take on the plane. They're all probably going to be finished by the time I get back to Los Angeles. But that was a really clever of them to, to do that. Um, but a long time ago, I was given, we always get great little like teddy bears and stuff like that, which is kind of easy stuff to carry, but somebody bought me a huge blanket, and they'd taken photographs. And I was really so nice, actually, no, it was really, I was going to say, I don't know if I've told the story, but it was really a beautiful blanket that they'd spent like weeks and taking photographs and showing different stages of it and um, then they brought it to the table and they gave it to me and it's oh, I don't know if I should say it. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, they put a lot of work into it. No. They, they put a hell of a lot. First of all, I couldn't take it back with me because it wouldn't put in my bag, but it, it really smelled bad. Like, <laughs> really bad. Oh. And I we donated it to a charity, like, uh, you know, like you have thrift stores, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, we get, I told my assistant to please take it to that thrift store that we saw in town. But yeah, that was like pretty crazy. Uh, other stuff we've had is open, I've had is open packs of chocolate. <laughs> yeah, like somebody will go like a half a pack of sour worms, you know, that's already been eaten half, and then this is for you. It's like, the gesture's really nice, but that, I'm sorry I don't eat open packs of, of food given to me. I just, you know, I'd rather stay away from that. <laughs> yeah, so we get interesting things, but nothing like that. <laughs> nothing. I, I mean, what's your nice? I, I would have just said you've got to show me how this works. <laughs> I wouldn't have said that. And on that note, Welcome to a big round of applause.